Welcome back. I was just talking to Mike Apple over break, uh, and I said, happy Friday. And he said, well, not so much. I got a lot of work to do. And uh, sorry for asking, my friend. Good morning. <laughs> I know. I just rant about things that just like affect this. me. It's, it's one yeah. of these. Ah. It's fine. Well, again, Melody, I'm telling you, Tuesdays are the best days of the week. They're your day. They're not it's my day. Great day to procrastinate and pile everything up to the back of the week, you know, <laughs> which is exactly what I do. And it's just a horrible habit. I know I'm my own worst enemy. Okay. How well, you know you, what? By the way? I am okay, but I know a lot May of people first, are struggling sakes. right now, right? Because that, that's the thing. So everyone's now looking and saying, okay, it's Friday, but it's also Friday, May yeah. the 1st. Rent is due. Now what? Yeah, you wonder how many you know people are having sleepless nights about this, considering mm -hmm. the rent's due today, whether you're a business operator or you know, you're living in a condo or what have you, um, gotta pay the bills. And there, you know, is this movement afoot to say, no, we're not going to pay. And, you know, some businesses are saying, don't have the money. Um, you know, as as the money is filtering through from the various government programs, that is still just, you know, keeping the lights on in some cases. So, again, the ripple effects of this through the economy are extensive. Interesting report this morning by Realosophy Realty saying, you know, all these Airbnbs, the short-term rentals, that market's dried up. So the owners of those are putting those into the rental pool for leases. So does that shift the dynamic of the market in the near term? A lot of listings, apparently problem is there's no one looking to move right now and no. until maybe prices adjust you could see a massive move here for pricing in the toronto rental market specifically in very short order because people you know there's you know maybe they'll take whatever they can get just to uh to pay what they own owe on the mortgages yeah that'll be interesting to see how that all uh pans out yeah. uh let's talk about some earnings two big ones reporting today apple and mm -hmm. amazon but taking very different approaches when it comes to i guess what they're doing corporately at uh when yes. it comes to COVID 19. right well amazon has faced some criticism internally from its workers that they weren't necessarily doing enough to protect staff right so jeff bezos in the uh company statement last night on Amazon's earnings. They made $4 billion, but they're going to pump all of that back into the company. They're not going to be as streamlined, actually, internally at the distribution centers. They're going to spread people out. What does that mean? That means parcels won't necessarily move as quickly through the line to go to wherever they're being shipped to. So you could see actually a slowdown in deliveries, perhaps. They're talking about, you know, in house testing and all of these things to, again, uh, make Amazon a safe place to work. And, mm -hmm. and this has been uh, sort of a, a pushback from a lot of workers in these big companies that are saying, hey, you got to do more to protect us from the virus. At the same time, Apple made eleven and a quarter billion dollars in profit in its first wow. quarter. Wow. And its iPhone sales were down a little bit, not by much. Services way up. Everybody's, you know, streaming and doing all these other things on Apple uh, systems. And Tim Cook, the CEO, says, we don't know right now where things are going. They're optimistic, you know, later in the year. Right now, they're not giving any guidance. So they are, you know, buying back some stock and doing some other things. Mm -hmm. They're down in the pre-market trade. Those stocks had rallied. App Amazon hit a record yesterday. Just before its earnings today, they're down about 3% pre-market. So uh, We've only got time for one more topic, but I do want to ask you about yep. this. We might be hearing about a new governor for Bank of Canada today. Yeah, it could be uh, Deputy Governor Carolyn Wilkins being promoted to the top job or an unnamed candidate. That is the report that's down to two as uh, Stephen Polaz, the uh, long-term uh, Bank of Canada governor, said he would not be renewing when his term comes due next month. So <laughs> he's stepping aside in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> um, you know, there was some question, do you extend him? Uh, apparently that wasn't uh, one of the options. So uh uh, well, it's interesting to find out who uh, Finance Minister Bill Morneau will announce, apparently, later today. I mean, talk about a tough job to come into. Um, so it's probably an internal candidate, we're thinking. But Stephen Polos has been there through oil crises, you know, uh, all these other uh, things that have gone on in the past uh, number of years and uh, has been at the helm of the Bank of Canada during some of very trying economic times and certainly, and most recently, the pandemic economic slowdown. Yeah, the C.D. Yeah. Howe Institute, just want to mention this quickly, Melanie, C.D. Howe Institute has just declared Canada to be officially in a recession. We haven't seen that in the actual economic numbers, but that type of dis declaration, not a surprise considering what we've seen with the uh, 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 jobs market and certainly 
the shutdown of the economy so abruptly, middle of March and continuing right now. Sadly, not a surprise, Mike. Thank yeah. you for your time today. I All know right. you don't like the weekends, but you're here. So happy <laughs> no, Friday. No, I do like the weekends. It's getting to the weekends. It's that good. Is a problem. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Take care.